Hello, everyone. I hope you all had a good day. And if you attended uh, today's hackathon, you guys had fun. Today, we are going to be diving into the second part of our NLP lessons hosted by Dr. Najib Khan. Um, as you guys already know, Dr. Najib Khan, I from you last time. Uh, we're going to skip the introductions this time. And we're just going to say a big thank you again for Dr. Khan for hosting these sessions. And before further ado, let's dive into it. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. Um, could you please let me share my screen? Oh, yes, I'll do that right now. Sorry. Um... All right, are you able to share your screen now? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, so today we are going to do the second part of uh, natural language processing. And this is also sort of the more exciting part of the, the two lectures, because today you will learn a lot about um, the more popular or common um, sort of uh, natural language processing systems that are out there. Um, so here is a brief outline. Um, we will quickly review uh, what we did last time or sequential modeling in general. Um, and then we will do a deep dive into transformer uh, models. Um, and then uh, in the third section, we will do uh, some NLP tasks with, with transformers. Um, so that's that's the general outline. Um, at any point, if you have questions, uh, please ask them in the chat or um, just in general. Uh, you, 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 yeah, you can probably post in the in the chat, and I, once in a while, I will stop by to to answer them. Um, so let's get started. So a review of um, sequential modeling. So as you know, text is a sequence of um, words or tokens. Uh, and so uh, today we will sort of review again um, a little bit about what we described last time and also um, a few new things. Um, so before we start with sequential modeling, let's define a few things, for example, the sequence and tokens. Um, so in general, uh, we would say a token is a point in d-dimensional space. So any sort of uh, vector or point in a d-dimensional space could be termed as a token. From the last lecture, we know that in natural language processing, um, a token is a, the smallest piece of uh, text that we can model or, or that we want to model. So we looked at different tokenizers and specifically the uh, white space tokenizer and the byte pair encoding uh, tokenizer. So those the tokenization process gives us d-dimensional uh, vectors. So it's, it's uh, a token. And then a sequence is a collection of objects with repetition and order. So that's pretty simple. Um, and then we looked at um, a few sequential modeling problems. So we looked at um, sequence to vector. So given a sequence of words or tokens, let's say m-dimensional uh, inputs, uh, we were mapping this input to uh, C dimensional vector where C is the number of classes. So let's say there are documents and we want to classify them into spam, non-spam or neutral. So that would be three dimensional output. And then um, the other types of problems are given a vector, we can transform it into uh, a sequence of, uh, of um, other vectors. So given just one vector, we convert it into a sequence. And then uh, the other type would be given one length of sequence. So let's say a sentence in one language, transform it into, um, uh, into a sentence of another language, but uh, that, that would be uh, the sequence to sequence. And the sequence labeling one, given um, a sentence with n tokens, we want to classify each of the token into one of the, one of the classes. So those are the four problems, and we looked at them um, in, in graphical form like this. So sequence labeling, sequence classification, sequence modeling, and encoder uh, decoder models. Um, so uh, 
today we will be sort of looking at um, at, at some of these problems uh, uh, in, in in more detail. But last time we did uh, one of the problem, uh, which was given a a sequence of uh, tokens or text, we were classifying it into uh, one of the classes. So in, at the end of the lecture, we did um, tweet classification, where uh, a tweet was a sequence of uh, words or tokens, and then we were classifying them into whether it's a it's a tweet corresponding to a disaster or or it's not a tweet about a, a disaster. So um, if you were to use just simple neural networks, um, we could use um, padding or sliding window or somehow uh, make the sequence to be a fixed length, let's say, uh, the input size should be 20. And then if a tweet is smaller than 20, we can use padding or we can take uh, 20 words at a time, or we can do some other sort of fixed length and feature extraction. So that would be the simpler approach is to, to model uh, this, this problem. Uh, but rather than doing this, we looked at uh, recurrent neural networks. Um, and in a recurrent neural network, what we have is, let's say we have an input X, uh, we pass it through, uh, we, we multiply it with, uh, with the weight matrix and it produces a hidden state. And that hidden state is used to produce an output. And then that hidden state is used at the next input as well. So that goes to the next step in time. And then another X comes in and that's uh, transformed again by the weight matrix and we produce an output. So that's the recurrent neural network, um, the, the basic recurrent neural network. So we looked at um, how can this recurrent neural network can be used in language modeling. So it's, we have um, an initial word, my, and then given this word, it, it, it is transformed to get the next word, which is favorite. And then this favorite is used to input into the next time step and so on. So that's the, auto-regressive language modeling task. Um, another example of vector to sequence would be given a vector of uh, pixels. You could use it to uh, input into the first stage in here. So right in here, the first stage would produce one token and then uh, we can do that repetitively to produce um, a caption for, for this image. So, so that, those were uh, vector to sequence tasks. Um, you could also use this recurrent neural network to do sequence to vector, which is basically text classification. So given a sequence of uh, words, uh, you can compute these hidden states. And then at the end, you have the Y, which is the classification label, and use that to, to basically compute your accuracies or uh, use the final output as uh, the text uh, being a spam or non-spam or disaster tweet or non-disaster tweet and things like that, okay? And then, um, uh, so this is this is just the structure of it. More, um, more in detail, you could have um, a more sort of, this is, this is the, give, give, this is just um, a line sort of uh, diagram. But if you want to look at what is, uh, what is happening in more detail. So you have text, uh, you convert it into numbers using some sort of tokenization or uh, one hot encoding, then you use embedding. And then this is where the recurrent neural network is. Um, so you could have a unidirectional, which basically goes from left to right. And you can also have a, a, a right to left uh, a recurrent neural network and combine both to produce a, a classification label. So that's just a, an example of uh, how in the past um, text classification has, has worked. Um, so that's just a, a brief review of what we sort of did um, last time or, or things related to, to, to last time. So today we are going to look into the transformer architecture. And before that, uh, we need to, uh, do a little bit of history of like what wh when wh what inspired the transformer architecture. Um, so to just analyze what what is inside a transformer. Um, so the transformer architecture is made of transformer blocks, 
Um, and each transformer block has this red uh, part, which is new, which you might not have seen uh, before, but all other things are pretty standard uh, deep learning things. So layer normalization is just um, normalizing the, the features that come out of this uh, multi-head attention layer. Uh, feed forward is basically a feed forward neural network. So given the inputs, it produces the feed forward uh, uh, activations. So nothing new in this part. And the residual connections are basically um, given, given the input, it not only passes it through the feed forward network, but also um, passes them directly to the output and sums them together. So it's pretty standard um, deep learning. What's new in a transformer uh, block is this multi-head attention. And the most important keyword is the attention. So we will look into what uh, where, where what is attention and where does it uh, come from? So um, these transformer architectures were inspired by the encoder decoder models. Um, so let's look into them as to what they are. So think of, um, Think of this diagram. So we have an input sentence, let's say in Spanish or in French, and we want to translate it into English. So what we can do is use um, a recurrent neural network to just consume all this um, input sentence and produce um, hidden states. And we can take the final hidden state as the input to this decoder RNN. So this is, so think of this as, um, let me draw. So we, we looked at, in, in the previous slides, we looked at um, vector to um, sequence, and we also looked at sequence to uh, vector, right? So think of this encoder as uh, a sequence to vector. So here we have a sequence, and then we produce a vector. And think of this decoder as uh, a vector to sequence. And that's how we sort of come up with this sequence to sequence uh, model. And so the bridging, the bridge between an encoder and a decoder is this uh, middle vector, the context vector, right? So this, um, this was the dominant sort of um, approach used in doing um, machine translation or um, uh, text summarization or even speech recognition. So input might be speech and output might be text. So things like that. Um, so this um, has a few uh, limitations. So the first one is that um, if we, let's say, so this is the same, uh, this text is the same diagram as this one, but with these, uh, with these text written here. So um, let's say you, you were to, uh, translate this English sentence to, I, I don't know which language this is, but um, either French or, or, or Spanish. Um, so the input words are the green uh, which arrived and then um, it produces, so this is the encoder part, it produces this hidden state. This hidden state is passed to the decoder part and then the decoder produces one word uh, at a time. And this, uh, this first token that's produced is feedback into the, the network itself and it produces the next token and so on. So, so the, the output is um, produced uh, autoregressively. And the network is trained by having the source text and the target text uh, provided to it and cross entropy is, is used as a loss to, to train this model. So this, this model has um, the limitation that is um, there, there may be a very long um, sequence of text, right? Like let's say um, there is like a, a whole paragraph uh, in here, but uh, what this model needs to do, what the encoder is uh, need to do is to compress this whole paragraph into one D-dimensional vector, right? So that's, that's a really sort of like a, a high restriction or really limited sort of uh, representation where the whole text in the input has to be sort of compressed by by one vector or to one vector. And this vector contains all the information 
that's uh, that's there for generating the the target text. So that's one limitation. And the other limitation is that if we provide the the context vector just to this first um, uh, uh, block, so it produces this first word, but then for the next block, the input is the hidden state of the previous one. So it no longer has access, direct access to the context vector. So it would be nice if we could have this um, C vector sort of input to all of these, uh, these uh, uh, blocks, autoregressive blocks. So that's basically the idea of uh, sort of using uh, the context vector to be input to each of these blocks. Um, this solves some of the issues and improved on the basic RNN uh, sequence to sequence model, but the fundamental restriction still sort of um, is there, which is the whole input sentence is uh, represented by this uh, one vector uh, called the context vector. So to resolve this problem, uh, what happened was researchers in about 2014, 2015, came up with the idea of uh, attention. And what attention in RNNs did uh, was basically, um, if you have the input um, sentence x1 to xn, uh, rather than compressing it into just one context vector, um, like here, like in the previous slide, where we only were using this as the context vector C. Instead of doing that, um, let's just use all the hidden states of the encoder. So let's use this one, this one, this one, and this one um, combined together to be the context vector. Now, the problem with this is that um, there could be varying length of, uh, of input sizes, right? So we cannot just con concatenate them. So then if you cannot concatenate them, then maybe just add them together or take an average. So adding is very naive. So what the researchers did was um, to uh, average them, but with weighted average. So um, for example, here, if I am looking at um, X1, the, the, uh, the weight for X1 is 0.4. So multiply X1's uh, hidden state with 0.4, and then that's your, uh, your contribution to the context vector. So um, 0.4 times uh, h1, 0.3 times h2, 0.1 times h3, and so on. And combining it together basically computes the, the context uh, vector. So that's the, that's the basic um, attention mechanism where not only you, uh, you are taking the final uh, context vector, but also the hidden states of all the all the intermediate uh, tokens that are in the input. So this um, this is the basic um, attention uh, in RNNs, uh, but this was um, th th this was this was not all. So this this helped uh, improve uh, machine translations for RNNs. But after this, um, researchers worked on uh, self attention. So in 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 this case, uh, what is happening is the input is uh, so the so when we are creating the output for this um, for this step, we are attending to the inputs. Uh, so when we are creating the output y, we are attending to the inputs. But what about a case where we are when we are producing the the output or the hidden state for x one? Can we attend to all the, the other inputs? So in a sense, can we attend to our own um, uh, inputs while producing the output for one of our own? So that's, that's uh, what uh, distinguishes attention from self-attention. So attention is comparing an item of interest to a collection of other items um, in a way that reveals their relevance in the current context. Um, Self-attention is comparisons, comparisons are to other items within a given sequence. So uh, when, when we 
compare when we don't when we have RNN for sequence to sequence, we can use attention. But when we have only one sequence and we are producing, let's say, um, good representations or embeddings for them, we need to use um, self attention. Okay, so um, how how do we compute self attention? So let's say if we are producing um, the output or the embedding vector for for the current input. Um, what we need to do is to attend to every other input in the in the sequence. So for y1, we would attend to not only x1, but to x2, x3, x4, and x5. Um, so how how do we how do we determine whom to attend um, the most? So that's basically the scoring function and the 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 attention weights. So Definitely, we need since this since we are computing the output for x one, we definitely need to attend to x one. But then, for every um, for every other input, we need a score between x one and uh, every other x. So, given that score, we provide a we we pass it to a softmax to make sure that the scores are between zero and one or like the, to make sure that the scores sum to one um, and once we have scores um, summing to uh, one we can take a, an a weighted average between um, um, all the all the inputs to compute the the output for for the current uh, input so that's the basic um, self-attention mechanism that uh, powers the, uh, the the transformer architecture. Uh, so they, for each um, token in the input, there are three roles that it plays. So the first one is um, is a query. So each token in the input could be um, a query, and query means that it is the current focus of attention uh, being compared to all other inputs. So when we compute the output for X1, um, X1 is basically the, the query. Uh, the second one is the key, is the other input being compared to the current focus. So if we are computing for X1, X2, X3, X4, and X5 uh, are the, the keys for, for, the, for the current uh, query, which is X1. And then the third one is the value. So the value, is, the, the input is used as um, a value when it is used to compute the output for the, for the current focus. So how do we sort of um, take just one token to, you, to, to be sort of put into these three roles? We basically transform it three times. So we have a query vector uh, or we have a query vector that's computed by taking the token and multiplying it with um, a query matrix. Similarly, a key metric, uh, a key vector is computed by multiplying the input um, token with the, the key matrix and so on for, 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 the, for the values as well. Okay, um, so there, there was one sort of missing piece where the score between um, a query and a key vector, um, how how do we compute that? So um, to compute that, the sim th there could be many sort of different uh, ways you could do it, uh, but the simplest one is to um, use the dot product. So you could take the the query um, vector and dot product it with the key, and that's your um, score for uh, for for that particular token. Okay, and then you soft max the, the scores and uh, compute the y by just averaging uh, the input uh, values with uh, the, the attention weights. So this is how look, it looks uh, graphically. So we have um, x1, x2, x3. We transform it through each one of the inputs uh, three times uh, using the key matrix, the query matrix, and the weight matrix. And then we pass it through the, we we, um, we multiply it by the soft mix um, 
weights, and then uh, that that gives us uh, the the weighted sum of uh, of the output. So for y three, we would have um, all these x one, x two, and x three um, combined in various proportions uh, to compute the, the output. So diagrams might be a little misleading. So let's uh, let's do an activity. Um, the activity is to implement self um, attention. Um, okay. So let's let's um, implement self attention because uh, in in equations it might be sort of hard to follow. But once you see the code, maybe it's, it would be slightly uh, more easy to to comprehend. So I'm just going to I'm just going to share this. Okay, so in the in the cell above, I have let me just um, copy this. Okay, so in the cell uh, above, uh, I have defined tokens. So this let's say uh, let's print token zero, um, token one, token one is zero one zero, token two is. One one zero and so on. So, let's say you have uh, zero zero one. So let's say these are um, your word to vec vectors or even one hot encoded uh, vectors. But I saw that it's um, one of the one of the vector is one one. So it's let's say a multi hot encoded vector. But this this um, the idea is that if you have some sentence like um, like hello world. Uh, what we do is basically transform it into tokens, and then we get uh, we get some representation, some vector representation uh, of these uh, of these tokens uh, representation, right? So we last time we looked at like how do we split this into tokens and maybe convert it into uh, into vectors by word to vec or one hot encoding. So that part, I'm not uh, looking at uh, it today, but today we are just starting with the tokens, okay? And and at least for this part where we are uh, implementing the the, uh, the self-attention mechanism. So as we um, described, um, there are three vectors, the query, key, and uh, value matrix, uh, matrices. So let me just... Um, um, initialize them with some random integers for for uh, better understanding. So let me just define them um, something between uh, between three between zero and three uh, integers, and their size um, should be um, three by three. Since my token size is uh, one by three, so the the weights should be one of their dimensions should be three. So let me define the query matrix and the key matrix and the, the weight matrix. Now, uh, given the equations, uh, if I have a, a given token, um, what I need to do is transform it using the query matrix to, um, to get the query uh, for that token. In my case, I have uh, four tokens, so I can just do tokens dot. Uh, I can dot the the query matrix with the tokens to get the queries. Um, I can do the same for uh, the keys, and I can do the same for for the values. Okay, so my tokens are four. So my tokens are four um, by three, um, and the W is three by three. Um, so this will result in a matrix of four by three. Okay, size four by three. Four. And three and similarly uh, for for these other um, query key and uh, value matrices as well. Now we need to do the scoring um, between 
sort of the the queries and the keys. So we have the query and we need to dot prod take the dot product of the query with each of the keys. So the way we can do it is uh, query time query dot product with the key. Um, but this key is four by three, and this is also four by three. So we need to transpose one of them. So let me just transpose the key. And this will give me the scores. And the weights were basically a soft mix of, of the scores, right? And now the, the final part is we need to basically take a weighted sum of the, the values. So we can do that by doing another dot product of the weights uh, with, the, with the values. And so if I run this, um, hopefully if I haven't made a mistake, um, I get the three-dimensional, um, I get the three-dimensional uh, representation or the three-dimensional attention weights for each of the input tokens. So here are the input tokens. Here are the tokens and here is the uh, three-dimensional sort of uh, attention-based uh, representations of, of those tokens. So that's, that's a, a brief sort of dive into um, into implementing self-attention. Um, it's it's a depending on how how um, familiar you are with NumPy and sort of uh, matrix multiplications. This could uh, could could be either very straightforward or could be could be very complicated. But please do ask any questions you might have before we move on to the full-on. Um, Transformer models that are powered by by these um, by these self attention uh, mechanisms. Okay, um, so let's so that, that was the the self attention and in uh, the transformer model um, itself. Now, what can they do for for natural language processing? So, two of the very sort of common things um, transform, transformer models have been used for is for language modeling in two flavors. So the first one is um, the autoregressive language modeling. And this is also sort of known as the decoder only transformer. And the other one is masked language modeling, uh, which is known as um, an encoder only transformer. So let's first look into uh, the autoregressive language modeling. So it's very similar to the picture, the, the uh, vector to sequence model that we have seen previously. The only difference is that instead of having normal or recurrent neural networks in here, we are seeing that there are sort of transformer blocks in this purple here. And what is happening here is we are inputting um, this first word and we are trying to predict the next word. So, so is the first word and long is the, the next word. So we, we are taking the cross entropy between um, long and whatever the, the maximum probability that the model outputs. So that's the, that's the cost function that we are optimizing. Similarly, at the next time step, we are inputting long and then letting the the transformer model to attend to the previous word and the current word or token and produce, and we are expecting it to produce end. And so we, whatever the model produces, we are taking the cross entropy between end and uh, the model output and so on. So that's the autoregressive uh, language modeling. And this is called a decoder model because this is, um, as I mentioned earlier, this is uh, taking on only a vector in the beginning. So we have a vector and then it's converting it into a sequence. So it's it's the vector to sequence or the decoder part of the um, encoder 
decoder model. So you had encoder in here and decoder in here. This is more, more like the, the decoder of the of the sequence to sequence model. Okay. And after autoregressive language modeling, we have the masked, masked language modeling. So in the previous lecture, we looked at uh, word to WEC. Um, and in word to WEC, what we had was um, given, given an input sentence like, hi, how are you? Um, what we would do is we would take the, let's say this word and we will get the model. Like if this is the model, we will try to predict what was in the middle. So we would just, um, hide this word and we would say like, uh, predict how, right? Um, and, and here uh, we do something really similar. So we, instead of just hiding one word, uh, we mask a few words. So we mask, let's say uh, this word long. So, so long and thanks for all the fish, right? So we, we mask a few words, masking means we just replace them with with some unknown uh, you know, token, and then uh, with some probability, let's say twenty percent or ten percent probability, we replace the the given word with um, with some other random word. So here we um, we replace the by apricot, and then the problem uh, is to reconstruct this sentence uh, using the transformer encoder model. So uh, we, we saw in the previous slides where we computed um, attention, self-attention, right? So we just compute the self-attention uh, using many, many layers, not just one layer. And then at the output, we transform whatever uh, the model uh, outputs as the vector. Uh, we, we transform it using softmax to produce probabilities or a vocabulary, and then we compute the, the cost function between the actual word. Uh, like for example, here it was masked, but the actual word was thanks. So we compute the model output uh, and uh, we compute the cross entropy between the model output and uh, the word thanks. Uh, similarly for here, we compute the model output and the uh, this word's uh, cross entropy to, to optimize this uh, this neural network. So this is called uh, an encoder only um, language model. And um, in the previous case, um, we had the most popular model here is the GPT models. So this is basically how um, the generative pre-trained transformer models work. So given given some initial sort of word, it can produce um, uh, the next words. So let's uh, GPT-1, GPT-2, and GPT-3 models are based on this architecture, uh, predicting the next um, word. And in case of uh, encoder-only architectures, the most popular one is uh, the BERT model, uh, which stands for bidirectional encoder representations of text. Um, but the idea is simple. Given given a sentence, mask some of the tokens and reproduce uh, train the model so that it can reproduce the the masked words. Um, so once this either this model, the encoder model, or the 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 autoregressive model is trained, um, a lot of the times the vectors that it produces. So these vectors um, here, like the these, these vectors here. So the, for each of the input token, um, the vectors it produces here are very useful uh, representations. So um, in, in the word to vec model, uh, we, we looked at like um, this example where uh, I say I can fly plane. And uh, the, the other example was I spotted um, a fly, right? So in the word to WEC model, the fly would be mapped to the same, let's say vector one, two, three, 
And it would be the same whether it appears in this sentence or in this sentence, right? Uh, but we know that these are very different things. In the uh, mask language model or in this sort of transformer model, since it is when it's computing the output for the word fly, it's self-attending to all the other words, right? All the other words. So it will produce um, different representation, whether it's looking at this sentence or at, at this sentence. And that's where the idea of uh, contextual embeddings comes into play. So the, the embedding vector that it's producing here um, is, is contextual. It, it depends on in which context this word is being used. Um, so we will see um, see an example shortly, uh, but but that's um, that's the main idea of like the BERT model or the transformer models being very useful for for text processing because they can um, represent um, embeddings that that are contextual and not just static. Okay, so um, we, we will take a five minutes break, but before that. Um, uh, after the break, we are going to use the Hugging Face uh, library uh, for doing uh, transformer training and also um, using some of the pre-trained models. Um, so the Hugging Face library really allows you to quickly prototype um, NLP solutions. Um, it has a rich set of um, pre-trained models. So almost every model that uh, someone releases open sources, it's available on, on Hugging Face uh, sort of uh, repository. And then you can use the Hugging Face library to um, basically use those in your projects. Um, and it also um, provides you the capability to, given that pre-trained model, to fine tune it and, uh, and use it in your own, uh, with your own data. So, um, once we come back from the break, uh, what we are going to do is we just cancel these. Yeah, we what, what we are going to do is basically go through this uh, notebook and um, and uh, look at some examples of uh, of uh, uh, and, and look at some examples of transformer models. So uh, let me. Yeah, okay, so the question was about the link, so that's good. Um, all right, so let's let's take a five minutes break and um, uh, I'll be right back with you in five minutes.
All right. Okay. So let's get started. So before we um we look into sort of fine tuning, let's look at um what we can do with um with the transformers library or the the hugging face transformers library out of the box. So um, here we have uh, so so the one of the things that the library provides is a pipeline. So a pipeline basically contains a few things, but it uh, if you don't care about any other things and just want to do um, your sort of analysis or or, or use the the, the models um, from an end to end perspective, where you just provide the input and it does the tokenization, running the models and then doing post-processing. So that's a that's a pipeline. So we import the, the pipeline and here we um, specify this uh, sort of um, the task, so which is the sentiment analysis task. And we say we want to use this model. Now you would be thinking like, okay, how would I know which task to pick or which model to, um, to pick? So sentiment analysis is basically um, you should know because this is one of the fundamental um, NLP tasks. Uh, but but the the model might not be clear as to as to where to get them. So you could go to just um, huggingface.co, and when you go there, there is a search bar bar. So you could search for any type of um, let's say sentiment um, analysis. And you you will see a lot of the models uh, in the models category. So you could you could try out like okay this financial bird sentiment analysis model. You can click on it. Um, you can read about like okay what data was it trained on? Who are the people who uh, trained this model and open sourced it? Um, things like that. What were sort of the performance metrics? What data sets it was used on? or trained on. So all those informations uh, mostly are sort of in here. So in our case, we are just looking at um, the distilled bird uh, model, which is a, a simple version or sort of a, a light version of the, the, the bird model. Um, and we are using um, it for sentiment analysis. So if I run this and if I uh, pass in like a um, an example sentence, it can do the tokenization, it can do the, the model processing, and it can give me a label, which is um, positive and a confidence of uh, 0.95. You could provide any sort of like a negative um, thing, um, like um, something like it was a waste of time or something. So it will hopefully give you a, a negative uh, score. Yeah, so it, it, it's, um, yeah, if you say it was not a waste of time, hopefully it's, it's a positive one. Yeah, okay, so, so it does. Sometimes it could be like, like um, something like um, where there are double negations. I, I don't know how, how well it handles, but um, you, you can play with it. So if you, if you are building a, a system where you need just sentiment analysis and you want an out of the box model, you could definitely use something like this. Uh, text generation. So uh, this is a GPT-2 model, which is basically now you know that the, the BERT model is an encoder only and the GPT is a decoder only model. So it's good for, for text generation. Uh, so here we are passing in um, a prompt in this workshop and on intro to natural language pro processing. Uh, we will teach you how to, and since this is GPT-2, so it wouldn't be as good as chat GPT, but at least it's running in the in the collab or at least on your, your um, computer. So the generic text is, we will teach you how to analyze language by reading, writing, and interpreting it as it is interpreted and see how this affects our everyday life as well. Um, yeah, so not, not very convincing, but given the prompt, maybe it's, it's okay. Um, you could do um, named entity recognition. So the task is named entity recognition. 
Um, and based on sort of like, if you search for named entity recognition models, you can, you can see other models. This is one of them. Um, so let's pass in this text. My name is Najib and I work at um, Serana AI in Vancouver, BC. So if we run this, um, it will group things like my name is a person, um, Vancouver, BC is a, is a location and so on. So here, uh, person is, is Najib, organization is Serana AI, uh, location is Vancouver, location is, is, is BC. So it basically did the, the named entity recognition uh, task there. And finally, you could do uh, French to English translation with the translation task and you can um, look up the model um, here. So uh, I am wondering if there is a translation model for, let's say, yeah, like a translation from English to PT. I, I don't know what PT stands for, Portuguese or something. Um, but yeah, you, you can you can look at what what translation models are out, out there. So there are five one two models in total. Um, so if I do, let's say Persian. Yeah, I, I don't know if, if there is one. Um, yeah, probably there is, but anyways. So you can, you can, you can use these pre-trained models uh, after making sure that whoever built them and, uh, and developed them um, are, are credible and the data sources are, uh, are good. Um, but it's not uh, all. You can take these models and fine tune them. So maybe, you want to do like some medical analysis of texts and um, you want to not just start from scratch, but start with a, with a model that already understands a lot of the medical uh, vocabulary. So you could pick up a, a model that's pre-trained from here and then use it on, on your task. So let's, um, let's look a little deeper into what is inside the pipeline. We, we have been looking at the excuse me, we've been looking at the pipeline uh, only. So uh, here we have, uh, we, we are looking at the internals of the of the pipeline. So the first thing it does is um, do tokenization. So here um, we are reading a, a tokenizer from a pre-trained checkpoint. So we provide a, a checkpoint and then we load it from a, uh, from a pre-trained um, checkpoint. So this, this is our tokenizer. And let's say we provide it with a few um, sentences, uh, raw sentences to basically split them into tokens. Okay, so um, if, if I run this, um, we have um, the input sentence, I've been waiting for a hugging face course my whole life. So this sentence is divided into a bunch of tokens and these are the IDs of those tokens. So um, there's a 101, which is the start of uh, sentence token, every every sentence has this 101 in the beginning. And then uh, there are other token IDs. So for example, um, this uh, 1045 may belong to I or I have, if, if it is model as one token. Um, it seems like I is model is one token because this other sentence also have I and it also start, starts with um, 1045. Um, similarly, all, all sentences start with I, so that's why every sentence has the ID 1045. Okay, so that's this tokenization. Um, and then uh, let's let's uh, load the, the model from the checkpoint. So um, if we load the model, um, here, here is what, what, what's inside the model. So, we have the input embeddings, and then there are these transformer layers, and this produces a hidden state, and then there is a head. But here we are just loading the, the auto model. So the auto model doesn't contain this, this head. So it's just the, the hidden states. So if we run our inputs through the model, um, we will see that we have, um, there are four inputs. So four is the input length. 16 is the maximum number of tokens in the input. And for each token, there is a 768 dimensional vector. 
So these are sort of our, our embeddings, uh, 768 dimensional embeddings. Now, if I want to print the, the value, so I have these sentences of, let's say I saw a fly in the room. So I want to just compare, let, let me just make, remove this A from, from there so that it's like uh, zero, one, two. So the, the, the second uh, token, So let me run this uh, and then run this through the model. And if I run this, I want to see the zero, one, two. So the second example and the third example. So let's do, let, let's look at the second example. And I want to look at the third token. So, uh, and I want to look at its embedding that's like 768 dimension. So I just want to look at the first five um, or the first, yeah, the first five uh, entries. So these are these. And then for the other fly, I want to see again. Um, so those two are, are different from, from each other. And that gives you an idea of like the embedding vector is for, for the word is the token is the same, uh, but the embedding is, is, is different. I might have mismatched the, the, the number for this fly versus um, this other one. So let's see, this is um, zero here. Uh, this is the startup sentence, I is 1045. Um, so would be the next one and it would be this one. So four, eight, seven, five. So this is zero, one, two, and three. So this would be uh, the third one. Yeah, so it's the it's the three there. Yeah, so, so this gives you sort of the, the idea that if the same token appears in a different context, um, it would have different uh, different embedding vectors. Okay. Uh, now this was just the this part of the model, the auto model. Uh, what if we want to perform some task with it? So that's where we need to add a head to this model. So there are different heads. So the the auto model basically retrieves the hidden states, which we did there. Um, if we include for causal LM, then this would do uh, basically language generation. Um, if we do for mask language model, then it will basically, given a masked word, it will predict the, the masked uh, word. You can uh, make it to solve multiple choice questions. So it can do like, one of the five choices given given some text. Um, you can do question answering. So if you just uh, import a model that's trained for question answering, and then you do um, you, you import it as auto model for question answering, uh, you can you can use that for, for question answering. Um, and finally, you can do sequence classification or close uh, token classification. Okay, so here. Um, we are doing the same thing we um, sort of uh, did previously, but more more in detail. So here, auto model for sequence um, classification. Um, we we load this model from a pre-trained checkpoint and pass the the inputs through the through the model, um, and then uh, this this will produce some uh, logics, basically the output of the linear layer. So we can pass this through the the soft mix. Um, to produce the, the predict predictions. So it's basically doing for the first um, for the first example, it's it's doing 0 0.004 versus uh, 0.95. So it means it's a it's a positive example because the second one uh, is is labeled as, as a positive. Um, for the second example, it's 0.99 versus 0 0.0005. So you can see that you can achieve the same um, sort of thing that we did with the with the pipeline, uh, but but if you want to sort of dig deeper and uh, and replace maybe the tokenizer or train the model um, or fine tune the model, you can do that with uh, with uh, with the transformers library. So um, last time we saw the disaster creates um, classification uh, problem and we solved it with LSTM. 
So today, um, now that we have looked at um, some of the um, some of the techniques with transformers, uh, we can we can see if we can improve the performance of um, disaster tweets um, classification with using a fine-tuned BERT model. So um, I, I've linked this uh, this notebook into the, the notebook, so you could just click on it and, and it will take you to Kegel. Um, it's again by uh, by someone on Kegel. They have uh, they have used BERT fine-tuning to improve um, improve the performance of, of uh, disaster tweets um, classification. Um, so you could you could right click on it and uh, and open it in in Colab um, if you want to sort of run it yourself in Colab. Um, I did the same. Um, there's one thing where it will give you an error for uh, for NLTK. So you could add um, something like this: import NLTK and then NLTK download stop words. So that that this um, that's the only thing that you need to change. Um, do change the runtime to to a GPU runtime because then otherwise it will take a really long time. So let's analyze um, briefly. I'll go through uh, what is happening in the in the notebook. So in the beginning, it's just getting the data from Kegel. So uh, I no no need to sort of dig deeper into there because it's just um, getting those files for for uh, for tweets. Um, then in here, it's from transformers, it's uh, getting the transformers, uh, the the bird for sequence classification model. It's getting the the optimizer, the Adam optimizer, uh, some configuration, the bird tokenizer, and and some other learning rate um, schedule functions. Um, yeah, so. Um, here uh, we are looking at the at the data set. So we looked at it uh, last time as well. So nothing new in there. There are tweets and um, and uh, the targets, whether it contains a disaster tweet or, or not. Um, Pre-processing, uh, it basically does uh, a bit more pre-processing than what we saw last time, but it's just um, what it's doing is removing stop words, replacing um, HTTP links uh, or removing them. And then punctuations and emoticons and smileys are, are being removed. Um, so, so that's the pre-processing. Here is the interest, interesting um, bit. So it's basically loading a tokenizer from a pre-trained um, tokenizer. And um, here, here is our tokenizer. And then uh, it's using that tokenizer to basically tokenize all the, all the tweets. So, um, so here we have a, a an example tweet uh, which has deeds, reason, earthquake, etc. So for deeds, it's the, the the tokenizer, the bird tokenizer gives it an ID of a token which is fifteen six one five and so on. Um, and yeah, so so it it uses the tokenizer to basically tokenize the whole um, the whole data set and then. Here it's splitting it, it um, splitting the data into into training samples and validation samples, um, and using a data loader to basically uh, go through the the training and validation um, sets. Um, here it's loading the the bird uh, for sequence classification pre-trained model. So first it just uh, loads it and then converts it into the, the device. So if you have CPU, it will move it to CPU. And if you have the GPU runtime, it would, it would move it to, to GPU. And then um, it's defining an optimizer. So if you are familiar with PyTorch optimizers, this is the same. You provide a learning rate and, um, and an epsilon. Um, and here is then the, the fine tuning um, task. So. Uh, we have the model uh, coming in from from the bird model here. So we have this model from from bird sequence classification, and now here, uh, what we are doing is going through the the training set, and using that model, we are producing the output, and then uh, computing the loss function and doing a loss backward on the 
on the last function and then um, doing a, an optimization step uh, and, and setting up the, the learning rate. So with this um, happening, um, there is also validation um, evaluation. So evaluation on the validation set happening. And if you run this, um, last time we were able to get like a 60% or something like that, um, if, if I remember correctly, uh, accuracy on the validation set. But with this bird um, being fine-tuned, you can see that the, the validation accuracy is 0.83. So this is in just five minutes, but or three and a half minutes. Um, but um, if you train it longer and sort of do a, a little bit more uh, fine-tuning, you could... You could uh, you could make it even more better. So that's that's the overall sort of structure where um, the Hugging Face library basically gives you uh, a PyTorch model um, trained on a on a large set of data, and uh, you can use that to to fine tune the 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 model on your own data. Um, okay, so that was that was the the fine tuning and using the the pre trained models part. Um, if you are interested in learning more about these topics and also diving a little deeper into what is possible, this course by um, by Hugging Face is uh, is really awesome. Like it, it it goes into much more detail about um, the transformer models, um, encoder models, decoder models. Uh, goes into the nitty gritty details of like transformers um, insights. And then the main NLP tasks. So you could do token classification or mass language model or translation. Um, one of my uh, personal favorite is the question answering. So given given a piece of text, um, let's say uh, here uh, is a demo of it. So um, given this text, uh, um, you can you, you can ask it a question like. For example, Transformers is baked by both um, JAX, um, PyTorch, and TensorFlow, right? And if you um, if you run this and ask it, the question is to like which deep learning library is baked transform hugging face transformers library. Um, it will give you the the answer. That uh, the answer starts at this sort of location and it ends at this location. So it it, it can do question answering based on a context. So um, yeah, I, I I would highly encourage um in, in one hour or one and a half hour, it's it's too much to sort of cover. Um, but if you are interested in the area and if you sort of uh, find this interesting, I, I highly recommend uh, this this course. So I, I will also drop the the link to this in in the in the chat. It's actually linked with the uh with, with the notebook. So with that, um yeah, that's all for uh, from me today. Um, please, please do ask any questions you might have. Um, I, I'm around, and uh, word to you, Hadija. All right, thank you. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. That was actually a very interesting lesson. Um, does anyone have any questions? Let's give it a minute. You guys can either raise your hand if you'd like to speak or you can type in the chat as well. So I'll give you guys a minute or two to type if you'd like. Okay, so that's more technicality. So uh, the quiz will be available hopefully either tomorrow or the day after. Uh, I do think it's actually good review as the questions will make you go into the code and try some things out. So I think it's good review, especially for something so like it's, like it's very important, it's very interesting. So I recommend everyone to try it out even if you attended. Just good practice. Um, any other questions? Alrighty. So I guess first off, a big thank you to Dr. Nadeem Khan for hosting these sessions, especially on 
this very, very interesting topic. I know NLP is like a really big thing, especially with chat TVT. So I personally really enjoyed this. And I know probably a lot of you guys did too. Um, and good job to all of you guys as well, the students, because next session is the closing ceremony for phase two. So a big round of applause for you guys for pushing through and getting this phase two done. So yay. <laughs> um yeah so if you want you can do the quiz and i can see a round of thank you coming in for dr khan and i guess i hope everyone enjoys their reading week and i hope dr khan you enjoy your your week and i'm i guess we'll call it a day all right thank you thank you everyone all right bye for thank now you. bye